This conference will... All right. Praise the Lord. And we are ready to go. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pray, but before I do, uh, you can turn your Bibles. We will be coming out of First uh, Peter. Um, let me see. First Peter four tonight. First Peter four, and I had told Aaron I owe him an apology. I was going to start with verse ten, but then the first nine are so good you just can't leave them out. It's just strange <laughs> to leave. You know, God's Word is just so good, you just can't leave some of it out. It would be it's kind of weird to start with 10 and go to 19. So we'll, we're going to go ahead and just cram this in tonight, however the Holy Spirit would like to have it done. First uh, Peter, chapter 4. Amen. And I'll open up with prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I, I ask that you bless everybody that came here tonight just to listen to your word. They're not here for a person. They're not here for man. They are here for you. They want to hear your holy word. We want to hear something from you, Lord God. You love us so much, and you're so good to us, especially whenever we don't deserve it. There's no one else that's going to love us that way. There's no one that can love us the way that you love us. And, Lord God, we want to hear what your Holy Spirit has to say. You said in your holy word that he is now our teacher. He is the administrator. He's the one that we learn from. And you said that he will reveal things to us. So we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua, your son, we ask right now that you reveal things to us. Lord God, I saw you work in my life, and I know the other people on here see you every day working in their lives as well. And, and just give us the patience to get through all the trials and the temptations that we go through. And you said that there is going to, this is going to happen to us. This is what we're going to study about tonight, Lord God. So teach us what it is you would have us to know. Show us how to get through all these things. And teach us how to have patience in Jesus Christ to make it through. Lord God, for those that are here, Bless the people that are here in their household and those that can't make it. We ask also that you bless them as well. Those that don't come on and, and can't come on tonight, bless them as well. Those that are having very bad weather, Lord God, we're supposed to have it here. In fact, at this time uh, where I'm from, and you're, you're keeping your hand, you're holding it still, and I thank you for that, Lord God. But those that are in the way of all this bad weather, we are praying right now that you cover them, Lord God, with your protective hand, with your protective cover. In Jesus' holy name, and we're going to sit back and watch you do your work because you're just that good. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. He's just that good. The devil doesn't want us to say it, but he's just that good. God is all that. He's awesome. Hallelujah. He's the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Amen. God is amen. the door. Jesus is the door. Amen. You can't get to the Father unless you go through Jesus. So don't pay attention to all that other mess y'all be hearing out there and hearing on TV and the radio. Jesus is the only way. Yeah. Whew. Jesus, amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. So um, yeah. how many readers do we have on tonight? And, and you don't have to. How many, how many people are going to read? I'll be one. Two. Two, okay. I'm giving them time to star seven in case they're off. Okay. Oh. Uh-oh. You look like me and you again. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, Brother Aaron, right? Yep. Okay, listen, if anybody changes, if God changes your mind, or if there's something you want to say, and you just feel led to say it, because God says we're all priests of our temple, so if the Holy Spirit taps you on your shoulder or says something to you or taps you on your heart, um, feel free to come in, and, and the way it is on this telephone, you have to jump in and let people know you're there, so if you break somebody's sentence, we're not going to hold it against you because it's hard to, you know, if the Lord tells you to say something, just please come out and say it to us, okay? So uh, feel free to take your time and star seven if you feel like getting on and saying something or asking a question. Don't feel like you are stopping the flow because the Holy Spirit is strong. He's all that. Mm -hmm. Amen. So um, I just want to open up a little bit with, uh, we're going to be studying First uh, Peter chapter 4. Mm -hmm. And uh, Peter is, it's authoritatively written to reassure the churches of Asia of the bonds of suffering, which I know a lot of us are going through in our lives every day. If you're alive and breathing, you're, you're mm -hmm. suffering. And uh, your faith is being tried and your hope is being tried. Mm -hmm. And um, 
Yeah. Well, you, I, I guess you can relate to that, huh? <laughs> Amen. So um, he's trying to remind them of their unity. Now, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to say that I'm reading that from what I have written here in my Bible. But I want to say privately that we all are going through something. We're going through changes. You see the church changing. You hear about it on TV. You hear about it on the radio. You hear about it with people talking. Um, and, and the church is, is slowly changing, and it's getting to the point. You know, the Bible does say in the end times there's going to come a time where people are going to be grasping for the word of God, and they won't be able to get it. And I'm going to be honest with you. I believe it's going on right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the doors are closing, and it's harder and harder to get the word of God, but we are still going through the trials of our faith. And and we need to hold on to this Bible. Hold on. Keep your Bible with you. Study it at all times. If there's something you don't understand, feel free to ask the Lord to show you whether we're with you or not, whether the Bible people, Bible study people are with you or whether you're by yourself. Feel free to ask God. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. I read this over and over, and I don't understand what this is saying. Please open up my spiritual eyes and show this to me, and he will. The Bible is no joke. It's not just a book. Um, actually, Bible Bible in it, Bible means biblio. It's the word biblio, which means book, but it's mm-hmm. God's holy book. It's God's holy word. Amen. So feel free to read His word, y'all, whenever you have a chance. I'm, I'm looking at First Peter chapter one, verse seven. I'll read First Peter chapter one, verse six and seven, and then we'll go ahead and go over to chapter four. Because when I was reading this, I saw this, and, and it, it it says, "Wherein ye greatly rejoice." Though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. And I know that everybody listening out there and those that are going to be listening after we're finished with this Bible study, I know, God knows, you're going through manifold, many, many temptations. It doesn't Mm -hmm. stop. It's not going to stop because you shed a tear. I want Mm -hmm. you to be strong. I'm sorry, it's it's the Marine in me. What can I say? I'm a warrior for Christ, and I'm a a warrior for the state. Amen. But Mm -hmm. it's not going to stop. You can cry. You can get a tissue all you want to, but Satan's not going to sit back and say, oh, uh, we'll give you a day. Okay, I'm sorry. I'll give you today. I, I won't bother you today. He's not going to do that. So it's mm-hmm. going to continue manifold temptations. And verse 7 says that the trial, and you want to know why you're going through that? This is why. That the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold mm. that perishes, though it be tried with fire, okay, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. That is mm. God telling you that your faith is going to be tested your life is going to be tested. If you ever notice, whenever you first start getting into God when you're young and you first start getting into God, you're getting into the Lord and, and you have a hunger for his word, you're just reading mm-hmm. it, you don't understand why, you don't understand what's going on, well, you are, your faith is being made strong by his holy angels, by him, by his Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Okay, you're spiritual, you're going through a spiritual refining. And, and what, what happens is you're going to be tried, okay? Next comes the trial of your faith. Your friends are going to, some of your friends are going to back off from you. I've had mm-hmm. family back off mm-hmm. from me. I had friends. That, Aaron, can you say the same thing, bro? Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. They, they back off of you, and, and it hurts. It really, really hurts. And people say, oh, she's a, she's a Bible thumper now. We can't do anything with her. And, or then other people say, well, you know, he's got his nerve. If I told everybody what he used to do in the dark, you know. Right. That's a trial right. of your faith. You can't fall for that. Mm-hmm. Okay, now let's go over to Chapter 4. And um, this is, Peter wrote this, and um, he's writing to the church. He's letting them know. Mm-hmm. Um, how to stay strong, what they should do, what they should stay away from. He's exhorting them to cease from sin, which is what we should all do as Christians. We should exhort. We should tell people to stop their sinning. And mm-hmm. we do it by the example of Jesus Christ, no other mm-hmm. way. Right. We are to use Jesus to teach people how to stop sinning. Uh, and then by this approach, the end of all things, he exhorts them to sobriety. Remember, we were saying the last time we were together, always keep your mind clear. Some people's mm-hmm. minds are so foggy that Jesus could come back and, 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 and leave again, and they wouldn't even know he was here. Mm-hmm. Um, charity mm-hmm. and love, 
Amen. Okay, I'll start out with, we'll do three, three, and three like we did before. Okay. Okay, for as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lusts of men, but to the will of God. For the time past of our life may suffer us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness, lust, ex- excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries. I- I'm pronouncing pretty good tonight. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I was going to get a little messed up there for a minute. Um, amen. What are you saying here? He's talking about Christ suffered for us in verse 1. Jesus Christ suffered for us. None of us was there to see it, but we have heard. The Bible tells you what he went through. Jesus Christ suffered so bad for you that they pulled his beard out of his skin. They beat him. The Bible says they beat him unrecognizable. Mm. And it burns me up whenever I hear somebody talk against Jesus and say he didn't exist, God doesn't exist, I'm mad at God, this and that. I mean, people that talk like fools, the Bible calls them fools. Jesus went through a lot just for us. Mm-hmm. And it says, for as much as he suffered for us in the flesh, it says, you're going to do the same thing. Mm-hmm. Okay, now, we we can't say <clears throat> that Jesus suffered uh, Jesus suffered so bad for us, but hallelujah, we got it good now. No, we don't. Mm-hmm. No, as long as you say you love Jesus, you're going to go through something. But what God wants you to do is he wants you to hang on. Mm-hmm. Then right. it says, um, for he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, um, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lusts of men, but to the will of God. Now, the um, verse 1b and verse 2, I have to in- in- interject something about my own life. And I don't know about anybody else. I, for the young people who are on right now, the young girls I was talking to earlier, and for anybody else that's listening here, um, please. Live your life for the Lord while while you're young, while you can. Um, And the reason I say that is when I was younger, um, you know, when you're young and you're healthy and and everything is everything and everything's on and popping, you want to live for the world. You can't wait to go here. You can't wait to do this. You can't wait to cuss. You can't wait to smoke. You can't wait to drink. You can't wait to get high. You can't wait to, to do all these crazy things. Okay, and what if Jesus comes back while you're in the middle of doing that? Then it's over. Mm-hmm. It's over. And what I did when I was young, I did all this crazy stuff. You know, you think you're cute. You think that you're, you're sitting, on, sitting on top of the world and nothing can hurt you. And then whenever you begin to get older, and I'm telling you, when that arthritis and stuff sits in, okay, mm-hmm. And your body starts breaking down on you and you lose your shape, your shape shifts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I'm telling the truth here. You see your shape starts shifting and you're not cute like you used to be and, and everything's changing on you. And, and then you start getting sickly or, you know, your bills, when you get older and you start paying bills and everything. Now, see, what happened was you gave the good part of yourself to the world. Mm-hmm. And now that everything's going downhill, now all of a sudden, now that everybody's older, now they want to get saved and, and praise the Lord and worship God. And mm-hmm. it kind of makes me sad sometimes. And I think to myself, why didn't we praise God and worship God more? I did it when I was younger, but more. More mm-hmm. when we were younger and gave him the, you know, the first fruits. Amen? Mm-hmm. Right, right. Right, give mm-hmm. God your first fruits. Don't wait until you're 35 or 40 years old and you're on Zantac for your stomach, okay, or, or anything mm-hmm. else. Don't wait until that time and then say, okay, Lord, I'm tired. I give myself to you. You know, give him the first fruits. Right. And this is what it's telling us in verse 1 and 2. And in verse 3, it says, notice it says, for the time past of our life may suffer us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. In other words, you were living impure. Mm-hmm. Okay, and, and he's saying we all did it when we walked the, in the lasciviousness, that's the excess, the drunkenness, and revelry, and abominations, banqueting, and abominable mm-hmm. idolatries. And that's all it's saying. Just do not live that way because while you're living that way, you may not have time to straighten up. I'm done. 
<laughs> I just want to piggyback on what you said about giving God the first fruits. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, you know, one I said this in church one time. <clears throat> I, if any kind of person should understand how God works, it should be a woman. Now, I, I know that that sounds bad, <laughs> but here's where I'm coming from with that. Because women tend to not want their husbands or boyfriends or whatever to get them second best at all. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you were married to a guy and he go get some flowers that this man bought his wife and she didn't want them, and brought them to his wife, that woman would be like, uh-uh, I don't want no flowers she didn't want. Now, <clears throat> y'all, y'all can be honest with me and say, yeah, that that's right, right? Oh, that's right. I mean, yes, that's right. <laughs> y'all don't want nothing second fiddle from nobody else. You want it to be almost straight from Jesus if it could be. So that's what that's what God wants from our lives. God, God wants our youth. He wants our fresh new ideas. He wants uh, all the energy that we have as young people to be toward him. Mm-hmm. You, you know, uh, that was uh, – Pharaoh understood that back in the uh, old days. Um, one of those pharaohs were really nice to the children because he needed another generation of slaves. He would, while their parents were getting breaking their backs working, he would treat the kids and give them all kinds of stuff, and they kind of took a liking to him. They said, he ain't all that bad, Dad. And the dad's like, yes, he is a bad man. But then when they got older, it's like, oh, yeah, this dude is, is a nut. But he, the, the pharaoh took all of their youth, and all of that good stuff. But that's what God is saying, and this what you I'll just piggyback on what you said. Okay, I'll read them for mm-hmm. you. Wherein you think it's strange that you run not with them that uh with them to the same excess of riot and speaking of evil of you? Who shall give an account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? For this is that two fours in your Bible on in verse six, or is it just my Bible? Is it one four it's there? Two fours. Uh huh. Four four. Okay. For for this cause, I, I just want to make sure it wasn't a misprint. For for this cause, uh, was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, and that they might be judged according to uh, <laughs> that they might be judged according to men in the flesh but live according to God in the spirit. Uh, Verse 4 said, when you separate yourself from friends that you used to have in the world, nobody's going to understand that. And there's going to be this pressure pull to get you back out there because you're freshly from there. And -hmm. verse 4 said, don't think that that little pull is strange. Don't think it's strange because you don't mess around anymore with the, the darkness that you used to do. You know, like when I was in college, uh, I had a college roommate, and he used to like he, he he would like to do everything but go to church. And I wasn't I wasn't so so uh, such a goody two shoes either. I would like to hang out with him because he's the only one with a car. So we uh, we would go hang out, and we thought we had a good time, and we would talk about it and all that stuff. But then uh, his girlfriend said, "Hey, let's go to church." And we were like, oh, so we all went to church. Every one of us went to church. And they, you know, were there because she asked, and they were, like, looking at their watches. And I was having a real reconnect with God. And I'm crying. I was Mr. Cool, too. I'm crying, got my hands up, and was thanking God. And they were looking at me like, what is wrong with him? I really had a reconnect with God, and it was very strong. So when we got done, uh, it was hang out again. And I just said, hey, I know you're going to hang out. No, nah, I'm going to stay home. And there was a definite pull from all my friends saying, hey, man, why don't you, what, is, what is up with you? What's the deal with you? You go to church one time, and now you miss the Holy Roller. I was mm-hmm. being nice about what they said. But That's was how they very, talk, too. Yeah. And it was a very strong pull from them as if, come on, go with the status quo. I mean, this, this ain't you. You know, you're just going through this phase kind of thing. But here we are, how many years later? 25, 30 years later. Well, I went in college 30 years later. 15 years later. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm still going strong with the Lord. Uh, verse 5. Um, don't, well, verse 4 said, Don't think it's strange when you don't hang around with these people. 
the same people who have to give an account, verse 5, to him who is ready to judge the quick and the dead. Now, the quick quick means people that were made alive, people who were saved, giving, uh, giving their life to, to Christ. This, this is saying here that Jesus is going to judge the quick, the people who are made alive, were born again, and the people that are dead, people who are not born again. You have to give, we have to give an account of our lives to God, to Jesus. It, it is, a, you know, I'm going to quit here, or I'm going to quickly do the next verse, but if you look at a court case, you know, your life comes before the ultimate judge, God. And the devil is prosecuted saying, this is why you need to go to hell. You did this, and it violates mm-hmm. your law. He did this, and he violates your law. You can have a long list of a whole bunch of things, a huge file of the stuff that you did. And then the defense comes along, which is Jesus, and said, yes, that's true. He did all of that stuff. But at, certain, at a certain point in his life, he gave all that stuff to me, mm-hmm. and I gave him eternal life. That is a pivotal point, and it's an, it's an important point uh, in your life that you have to take seriously. Because you're, okay, here's, here's the thing, and I'm not going to belabor this, but I just feel like it's, um, the, your body always wants to do the wrong thing. Your yes, flesh right. always wants to go where it wants to do. Your spirit always wants to go God's way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, the determinant factor is your mind, is your soul. If your soul and your body double teams your spirit, you will always do the flesh stuff. But if your 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 mind and your spirit double teams your body, you will always do the God thing. And so that's why that's why you, the Bible says to renew your mind with the renew Word of God. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Verse six. Uh, for for this cause, this is why we preach the gospel. Also to them that are dead, the people that, that, that need to be quickened or wakened up, that they might be judged according to the man in the flesh. I mean, that be judged according to the man in the flesh, but live according to the God, to God in the spirit. Now, when you do um, preach the gospel to these people and they, and they convert them or God converts them, they are going to be judged by men. You know, you got uh, Joyce Meyer and all these other people who people don't agree with, but these the United States Senate is going after their finances. They're being judged of men. Mm-hmm. But they also, will. Uh, uh, a lot of them are living according to God in the spirit. So, you know, it's hard to tell who, the, well, I wouldn't say it's hard to tell the crooked ones is because they're all going under scrutiny. Mm-hmm. But I'm just saying there's some, there's some really good ministers who are being blessed who are under this scrutiny, and they're living according to God in the spirit. Okay, I'm going to stop. You know, I wanted to add to what you were saying. I think you were on verse 5 when you were saying this, but you were talking about, um, I found that if anybody wants to write it down, where one of Satan's names is the accuser of the brethren. I think Mm -hmm. we talked about this before. You're going to hear us repeat a lot of things, but that's okay, because just as Jesus said, verily, verily, when you hear that brother say, verily, verily, you open up both ears, because he's going to hit you with something. He's going to tell you something you need to know. And if you hear it, if you hear us repeating something, it's, it's, that means it's worth repeating. Now, Revelation 12.10 calls him the accuser of the brethren. This is what he's going to do. Now, what happens is he's going to accuse you in front of God for the sins that you did. What I want you to know is I heard somebody say something one time and just dropped me to the floor. They, they said, um, I ain't worried about my body. I ain't worried about my body going to heaven because my, um, how do you think? My, oh, yeah, my, no, they said my body sinned. I didn't sin. <laughs> and I thought that was the craziest thing. I don't know if anybody knows this, but your your you sin, your soul sins. Mm-hmm. You know, your soul is what? Your soul is made up of what? Three things. Mind mind, will and emotions. Right. Mind, will and emotions. I'm sure everybody heard Joyce Meyer said it a million times, you know, but it was said before she said it even, you know. Mm-hmm. But your mind, your will and your emotions. Those are the things that causes you to sin. Those are the things that makes your body go through the things that it goes through. When you're 55 and 60 years old, your body is going to tell a story about how you treated it. It is going to let people know what type of steward you were over that body. The body that we are in right now, God gave us that body. That bo- This body is not us. This is not the real us. This body is not going to go to heaven with us. 
But I just mm-hmm. want to let everybody know your body's going to tell on you. What you do in your life, it'll come back on you. Mm-hmm. And, and I also hate to say this, but there's a lot of people who are good people now, serving the Lord and everything, but uh, you can look at some people. I don't know if you've ever did this or not, but have you ever looked at a person before and you can almost discern what they used to be into? Mm-hmm. 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 Because guess why? Their body's telling on them. I hate to say this, and, and I don't mean it to sound smart, but people who engage in homosexuality, you can see that even though God saved them and delivered them. They're not doing it anymore. You could tell a person who used to be a woman of the night, now she might be dressing in better clothes. I'm not saying it to be smart, you know, but she might be mm-hmm. dressing in better clothes and everything now, but there's just something. You ever, you ever say something? You ever hear people say this? There's just something about that person I can't put my, my finger on, I can't put my thumb on. Mm-hmm. That's what's happening. You're discerning to see the, because why? Their body is telling on them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so, so be careful how you live your life. Um, what am I doing? I'm doing 7, 8, and 9. It mm-hmm. says, but the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And mm-hmm. above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the mul- a multitude of sins, we always say. And I hear the multitude of sins. Um, use hospitality one to another without grudging. Okay, three things I see here. Prayer, love and hospitality without grudging. Okay, that means don't be like the Israelites and complain until God gets tired of hearing you complain. You you constantly pray. Pray. Talk to God. Just Mm -hmm. talk to God. That's all I have to say. Somebody said one time, um, but I don't know how to pray. What do I do? I don't know how to pray. And I I tell them, just practice. The best way to learn how to pray is to practice. You get in the bathroom by yourself one day or you're on a bus or in your car or in your home, your apartment, and you just start talking to them. Say, Lord, I can't see you, and this feels really crazy, but I love you. From what I've been hearing about you, I love you, and I need you to teach me. And just start talking, and the Holy Spirit will step in because God already lives in you. Because you've accepted mm-hmm. him as your savior, and the Holy Spirit will give you the utterance of what you are to say to him. The whole, allow uh, do the opening, okay, I'll say it that way, do the <laughs> opening and let the Holy Spirit preach the body, te- talk the mm-hmm. body, he'll, 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 he'll talk the rest, he'll say whatever else you need to say. And that's mm-hmm. it, prayer, a lot of love, and it says love co- covers the multitude of sins. And, and I mm-hmm. noticed something here, I don't know, Brother Aaron, I don't know if you noticed or not, but you ever notice people always say, uh, uh, I mean, love covers a multitude of sins. It seems mm-hmm. to me like a multitude and the multitude is two different things. Is it just me? No, that's not just you. That's two different things. That's two different things. Love covers the multitude of sins. Love covers a multitude of sins. The multitude of sins. In other words, this sounds like this sentence is talking about Jesus. He's the only one that can cover the multitude of sins because a multitude of sins could be something that a church is doing, some kind mm-hmm. of sins that a church is doing, thinking that, you know, once saved, you're always saved, you can sin, do anything you want to do, you still go to heaven. Mm-hmm. That's a multitude, but the multitude of sins, to me, is every sin in the world. Yep, everything. So in other words, God's telling us here, have Jesus in your heart and you'll be okay. Amen. Mm-hmm. I'm done. <laughs> yep, that's what I was thinking. A multitude is a portion of the whole thing. That's it. That's what, yeah, I couldn't think, yeah. <laughs> uh, what is it? Uh, 10, 11, 12. Uh-huh. As, e- as every man has received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. And any man speak, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth. And God in all things may be glorified through Christ Jesus. To whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, mm-hmm. as though some strange thing has happened to you. Okay, 10. As every man has uh, received a gift, 
um, even so minister the same one to another. Well, you know what? It's just like God uh, to, you know how God um, creates a tree, and a tree will uh, spring forth, I guess, let's say, in, uh, apples. And inside those apples will be seeds. And inside that seed is another tree. So mm-hmm. one at some point, there's another, there's, there's a cycle that's going to happen. You know, God made Adam. He made Eve. Together he made children. That's going to make some more children. That's going to make some more children. In other words, anything that God gives you, keeps giving. It has a pro-give. It has a pro-creation, which is kind of what makes homosexuality wrong because it stops the creation. Mm -hmm. Two dudes can't make no baby, and God is interested in his gift continuing. Mm -hmm. Um, Now, on a more spiritual level, if you have the gift of exhortation, if you have the gift of ministering, even if you have the gift of help, you know, that's very important, too. You need administrators in the church, too, people who are organized. That's a gift. And God's gifts are to be used to help other people. Now, we have seen time after time of ministers who have been helping themselves with God's gifts. And I sometimes I believe that some of these people um, are blessed with real gifts, but the motives are wrong. The motives are for self-gain or whatever it may be. But whatever gift that you have is what it's saying here, really, in verse 10. Use it to help other people. And the word minister here, if any man minister, you know, when you hear the word minister, uh, particularly in the black church, you you think that title means that you are somebody. (laughs) You Mm -hmm. know, that really does Yeah, change it around. Yeah, it means that you serve. You're a server. You you are available to do whatever the church needs. That's what that title means. But nobody really knows that because it has a skewed um, definition. So what it says is, if any man minister, if any man serves, let him do it with the ability which God gives. You know, because if, if, if you, let's just say, uh, I'll use myself as an example. At my church, uh, the church I used to go to, I was an usher. I served as a comforter, and a comforter was uh, really usher for funerals. Um, and I served on a, on a lot of different auxiliaries, and I knew that I uh, would have to do that in God's strength because if I did it in my own strength, I would skip services. <laughs> I'd be like, I'm tired. I worked all week. But when you get up and you get into the Word and say, God, thank you for your supernatural strength to serve your people, See, the mm-hmm. gift is, is, is serving other people. I would, like, do it in God's strength. You remember that lesson we did a couple of weeks back when we were talking about how, uh, I forget who the character was, but he wrapped up his clothes and he beat that, uh, that horse back to, uh, back to, his, back to, uh, back to the town. Ow. Mm-hmm. Well, anyway, uh, I'll just, I'll just move on to the next one. Uh, what is that? Um, um, oh, that God in all things may be glorified through Christ Jesus, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. It sounds like he was done here in verse 11. Then he said, oh, wait a minute, let me say this too. Don't think it's strange concerning these people that's going to hate you because you separated from them. That's right. This is not strange. This is what's supposed to happen. You're, you know, do you know, um, and I'm going to kind of expose some stuff about my family. My dad was his, my dad has been using and selling drugs ever since I've been I've known him. You know, my dad died uh, a drug abuser, and um, when his friends would try to quit drugs or they would try to quit smoking because smoking was kind of like a pacifier in between drugs. It was just something to calm your your, your nerves because you wanted some more drugs. So if they tried to quit smoking or they tried to quit drugs, they would just go crazy. And so it would be, it's like the Bible saying, don't think it's strange when you try to quit drugs and you're going through this withdrawal. Don't think that's strange. Actually, your body is really trying to get all that stuff out. And so that's none of that should be strange or odd to you. So when you separate from some people that are really trying to get you to go back in the sand, 
and they start hating on you, don't think that's strange. You're just going that's through withdrawal. Thing. That's a blessing, actually. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And the same thing about drugs. When <laughs> when you, your body is craving it and you're fighting it, you're resisting it, that's a good thing. So uh, the Bible says, says, don't think that that's strange, like something strange is happening to you. This is the normal thing that happens <laughs> when you do that, you know. So just, uh, so okay, I'm going to stop there. <laughs> you know, I, I like it because Jesus, God's letting us know. He's speaking through Peter, the Spirit of God. Now, we've got to remember the Holy Spirit was sent down now, okay. Peter is speaking in, in the Spirit, through the Spirit of God. And, and, and God's telling us, it's coming straight from God. He's telling us, don't stand there. You ever see, I've done it before. You ever sat there and say, I, what is always happening to me? Yeah. What did I do? Yeah. I didn't yeah. do anything. God, why yeah. are you mad at me? And this is exactly what this is trying to explain to us. God's telling us, do not, do not fear. Do not worry. Right. Because it's going to happen. In fact, if you can't take it this time, you will not be able to take it the other 235 times. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And while you were talking, I found something I'd like for everybody to either write down or go to. You know, keep your finger on where we're at or put a piece of paper in there or something if you have your Bibles open. Uh, but go, uh, 1 Corinthians, pow, verse 12. 1 mm. Corinthians, verse 12. And uh, Brother Aaron said something and, 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 and cut, um, Chapter 12, I'm sorry, I think I said verse. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, um, it has both of what he was talking about in here, and I want us to know this in case you may need to know it later. Um, ch uh, chapter 12 starts with 4. I'm going off from what we're studying, but I'm going to say it real quick. I'm reading fast, okay? So mm -hmm. if I start speaking Spanish, just tell me, hold up, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it says, now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit, and there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord, and there are diversities mm -hmm. of operations, but it's the same God which works in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. In other words, it's given to you. God gives you gifts to profit, okay? This is for you to profit. And I'm not talking about for uh, City Bank or National Bank. And it says, uh, 4, verse 8, For to one is given uh, by the Spirit, not by man, for one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, you can circle that, and to another the word of knowledge, you can circle that, that's two, mm -hmm. and by the same Spirit. To another faith, that's three, by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing, that's four. By the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, that's five. To another prophecy, that's six. To another discerning of spirits, that's seven. To another diverse kinds of tongues, that's eight. To another interpretation of tongues, that's nine. And these gifts God gives you before verse 11. The reason God gives you these gifts uh, is because verse 11 explains it and says, but all these work that one and the self-same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Mm -hmm. So God gives you these gifts whenever he feels like giving them to you. So just mm -hmm. because you prophesied to somebody one day, you prophesied that the Golden Gate Bridge is going to fall in, and just because the Golden Gate Bridge fell in, it doesn't make you a prophet. Right. That means that, right. right, right, right. People try to snatch it off of God, and they say, it's mine, I'm keeping it forever. And, and they never mm -hmm. prophesy again. <laughs> you know, um, and then it says, um, for the body is one and has many members. And then we'll go down to verse 13. It says, for by one spirit we are all baptized into one body, uh, whether we're Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and having been made to drink uh, into one spirit. Now, I want to jump over to verse 28. Here's something else. I heard him say, I heard you say help. Mm -hmm. Some people have, a, uh, have gifts of helps and healings and tongues and things in the church. These are diversities mm -hmm. in the church, okay, um, uh, workings of the church. It says, verse 28, and God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondary prophets, third teachers, and after that, miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Mm -hmm. See? So these are different gifts that God can give the church. He gives it to the church when he gets ready. Yes. Oh, I just wanted to run that by everybody. So when you see these churches, it says, "Yeah, we're the we're the healing church. We're the Baptist healing church by down by the railroad over over across the river." You know, because they had a couple healings in the church. Well, they had a couple healings in the church, but what if God wanted to change them into help to help mm -hmm. other churches? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These are different. These are different gifts. Okay, we were on verse thirteen. Yes. 
13, 14, and 15. Does anybody have any questions thus far? Okay. Nope. Verse 13 says, But rejoice inasmuch as you're partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. <laughs> In other words, yeah, God's telling us, when you go through stuff, smile, kid, and you, you, yes. because that shows you're, you're the king's kid. Yes. God, yes. In other words, Jesus Christ went through it, you're going to go through it too. Satan hated Jesus, and he hates the Jesus in you. Mm -hmm. uh, verse 14 says, if you be reproached for the name of Christ, be happy, for the mm. spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part, he's evil spoken of, but on your part, God's glorified. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> people can hate Reverend Essie all they want to and talk about Reverend Essie all they want to. I don't care. But in fact, if nobody talked about me, I'd be a little nervous. Right, right. Exactly. See? So if if nobody talks about you and if nobody treats you bad, I'm going to mm -hmm. tell you why Satan already got you. Mm-hmm. A house divided against itself shall not stand. Not and if you're already, right, if you're already a part of Satan's house, why should he have to mess with you all over again? He already got you. Right. So if, you, right. if you're not going through anything and you're just whistling Dixie every day and everything's okay, look out, something ain't right. Right. And then verse 15 says, but let none of you suffer as a murderer. Okay, in other words, don't get mad enough to kill somebody or to steal. Mm -hmm. Don't be a thief. As an evil, <laughs> notice it says, as an evil doer. If you mm -hmm. steal, you, you can't go, you're a thief. It means you're an evil doer, and it says, or as a busybody in other mm -hmm. men's matters. In other words, do wow. not gossip. Do not get into anybody's business but your own. Ain't, ain't that a trip? I mean, mm -hmm. look at look at the the he put murderer, thief, evil doer, bu and busybody on the same shelf. So, yeah, in the same paragraph, the same little paragraph. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Ooh. I mean, just like you can steal, steal someone's physical life, you can steal someone's um, character by being a busybody. Mm -hmm. I was I was just telling my wife, you know, yesterday that you know I had called a somebody in Phoenix because I was going to Phoenix. And uh, it was a husband and wife. I was come, I was going out there, and I was going to say, "Hey, can I? You know, can we hang out?" The wife wanted to have nothing to do with me, and I was wondering, "What is the deal? I, what did I do?" And so I talked to the husband, and he was really quiet on the phone. Like, "Who? Wait a minute, let me go leave the other room." And he's like, "Hey, hey, man. Uh, yeah, we we came to we came home for a while, and we met up with your ex wife, and you know, the wife they start talking about you and all that." So. I was like, well, what did I do? And nobody wanted to talk to me. It's like, wow, my my mm. character was assassinated, just like you can assassinate people in real life. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even know that, you know, that happened. I just know, I see the after effects. People just not want to be around me, and I'm trying to figure out what did I do. Aww. Anyway, but hey, I, I, I'm suffering for, for Christ. Like 14 says, if you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. So I was happy. Be happy. <laughs> now, <laughs> there you go. That's the that was the that's a key thing to be reproached for the name of Christ. Now, if you take that part out and you being reproached, reproach, you got to take the happy part out too. <laughs> but anyway, let's go. I'll go to sixteen. Yet, if any man suffer as a Christian, let him let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in on his behalf. Uh, did you do that one? No, you seven. you could finish. You could do uh, do the nineteen sixteen to nineteen. Okay, for well, the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. Yes, yes. And if it first began at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? Oh, and my. if the righteousness scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore let them that suffer according to the will of God, commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto faithful, as unto a faithful creator. All right, if you suffer as a Christian, shouldn't be ashamed. When they talk about you and ostracize you or don't want to have nothing to do with you, don't be ashamed of that. That's a badge of honor, actually, because it, it, verse four, chapter 4 started off uh, talking about how Christ suffered. Mm -hmm. So it's a badge of honor. And you know what? That's a twisted way of... It's not twisted. 
but to us as human beings, it seems kind of messed up. Because it hurts. The, yeah, God's like, you know, when you suffer and you endure to the end and I see that you held on, that is honorable to me. And I'm like, God, while I'm suffering, I want to just take my fist and drive it through somebody's face. Can you I not do that? Suddenly. Yeah, I mean, God, I mean, look, she right here, I mean, he right here, I could just knock him or her <laughs> out cold. I mean, I know you'll forgive me, but God says if he suffered through this to the end, it's uh, it's, it's a badge of honor. And don't be ashamed to glorify a God on his, on this behalf. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. So if you know if you're going through that, you, you you're pretty much being judged by the world, and it's kind of like um. What do you call that stuff uh, that's been that uh, gets pure with fire? Is it gold? It gets so wrinkled. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you if no, you talking about the dross? The, he pulling the dross out of you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, but but uh, you know, fire is a pure fire anyway. If you put something on, set something on fire, what's ever left after the fire is the real thing it, that it really is. If nothing is there, sure is. then it was nothing to begin with. So when you get tried by fire. You, I mean, you get tried in judgment of this world. Uh, uh, it says here to not let it be ashamed, for it must begin with us. Uh, and if if it it when if it and if it first began with us, what shall the end be to them who disobeyed the gospel of God? Mm. And we all know the answer to that. They don't even have a place in 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 with God at the at the end. And if the uh, righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly, ungodly and the sinner be? Now, when it says this, uh, the God, the righteous scarcely be saved, it's kind of it's kind of funny because you never think about un, uh, righteous people not being saved. Mm-hmm. But if you know what I believe is saying here, these people who we look at as righteous, you know, people who we think that are righteous, mm-hmm. uh. And that they are not. You know, like I said, there are people in the gospel for the business of it, for the money-making business of it. And they will do the best song and dance you can ever think of. So if God is going to shave off that fat, you know the people that ain't doing nothing for God ain't got nothing coming. No chance. Yeah, it's like no chance. So, wherefore, which is meaning so, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him. Stay on the course when you are suffering. And Reverend Nessie, you know I know about this suffering. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. And so, I mean, I didn't turn from God, but I did have a lot of questions for him, like, Lord, you know you need to start talking. Yeah, I was very concerned for you, too. I really was. <laughs> yes, like. Lord, I ain't gonna let you go, but you got some explaining to do, Lucy. <laughs> so, I, but I kept my, I, uh, along with you know, to help with my wife and my mom and you, um, I uh, commit the keeping of my way toward God in well doing, as unto a faithful Creator. So keep your keep your footing, keep going when you suffer. There's no temptation known unto man that Christ didn't go through. And he did the ultimate sacrifice, both in, in every area, emotionally, physically, in every area. So if he can do it, and he lives in us, then we can do it. That's right. And the only reason that he did it for us is out of love. Yes. Jesus loves us. God loves us. God sent his only son to save us from this bad, hellish earth down here. Why did he do that? Because he loves us and he wants us to see the good one. <laughs> okay? Yeah. Everybody yeah. wants to know, well, I don't understand all this Christian stuff. I don't understand. Well, what, why did this? Why did why? Well, the reason all this is happening is because God said, he even tells us in his word, that there's going to be new heaven and a new earth. We're not going to stay up in heaven with God. I mean, you can if you want to, but we're going to come <laughs> back down on a new earth with Jesus, where the lion will lay down with the lamb. God is asking all of you right now, he's saying, do you trust me enough to hang in there to see the new earth? I'll show you the way it was supposed to be before Satan used the snake. That's what he's telling Mm -hmm. you. 
Yes, exactly. Yeah, yes, I'll right. show you the way I meant for it to be. God is so good, he wants us to see what he meant for this mm-hmm. world to be like. Yes. Amen. Does anybody have any questions? Anybody want to interject anything? Anything come across your mind? Star seven. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say forgot. Everybody's all quiet. Praise the Lord. God is good. Well, Brother Aaron, you want to add anything? Anybody else? I don't, ma'am. I think I didn't talk enough. Amen. All right. Well, just like he said when he was talking, and, and I, as he said it, I looked in verse 12. It says, Beloved, I hope you remember 1 Peter 4.12. Just try to remember that. 1 Peter 4.12. When you get scared or when you get upset or when you get mad or angry or nervous, 1 Peter 4.12, beloved, he's calling you beloved. That means you are loved by God. He's saying, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials, which is to try you. A fiery trial is not just taking a math test in school. Right. Remember that. So he's saying, don't try to act like something strange happened to you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, uh, Brother Aaron, you want to pray out? Yes, ma'am. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we just thank you for your word right now, Lord God, that you have given us. We thank you, Lord, that your word is true, and we thank you that we, as we deposit your your word into our spirits, Lord God, it'll do the things that it is set forth to do, Lord God. And, Father, it'll jump up to our memories and allow us to remember it in these during the fiery trials, Lord God. Father, we thank you that we'll remember that, when we suffer, we it is a badge of honor to you to hold on to the end. Yes, sir. Father, we just thank you to let us know that if we mess up, Lord God, and we go through a fiery trial, and it's not because of you, that you still are our are, are deliverer, and that you, you are able to make us whole. So, Father, as we go out into this world, Lord God, and we minister the gospel to you, we know that the persecution is going to come. But at the same time, Lord God, you make a way of escape. And when the things come, we look for the way of escape. So, Father, we thank you. We bless everybody online. We bless everybody. That, we ask you to bless everybody that could not come and people that's online. We plead the blood of everybody so that everybody can remain safe as they go throughout the rest of the week, Lord God. And, Father, we know that we have specific assignments coming up this week. Everybody's going to have that person to minister to. Everybody's mm-hmm. going to have that person to lay hands on. We're going to have a word in our mouth to hear for, for somebody else to hear. And we thank you, Lord, that we hear your voice promptly when you say, say it now, do it now. Yes, Lord. Because the, our, our gifts are for yes. other people. So, Father, we just give you the glory, give you the praise for what you're doing. We just thank you, Lord. And as we go out to this week, we do it as unto you, Lord God. We give you the highest praise. In the mighty master's name of Jesus, by his blood, amen. Amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. For the things he has done. God bless you guys, and I will see you next Wednesday. Good night. Good night.